My name is Melissa, and I was at my grandparents' house with my cousin Andrea. My grandparents live in the countryside in a rather isolated spot. We had decided to go for a walk to explore the surroundings. We walked for a long time to reach a place where there was a very busy road, and on the side, there was a private property blocked from access by a gate. Further on, we spotted a small passage leading into the field, so we decided to go. This place actually leads to the private property seen a little earlier. Entering it, we saw a large space where there were swamps and kind of a mini lake. This lake was surrounded by trees and bushes and therefore not very visible outside the property. As we approached, we could see an orange life jacket on the ground. In front of us, there was a wooden pontoon. We wanted to go, but we first had to walk a very narrow path by the side of the lake to access it. While we were walking, we saw a sort of blue plastic tube with a rusty metal stopper filled with marble with illegible writings on it. Continuing on, we saw huge nutria in the lake and therefore turned around. As we retraced our steps, we noticed a can of yellow gasoline, a pair of torn shoes, and pieces of pipe scattered all over the place, as if people lived there. Andrea decided to go to the small forest next door, where you could hardly see inside the car. There were a lot of trees. I preferred to stay near the lake because I had a very bad feeling. <laughs> To give her courage, I spoke to her, but the more she walked, the weaker her voice was. But I still managed to hear that she had arrived at a place where it was a broken blue dresser with a sleeping bag and a wooden cabin. She kept going, but suddenly she stopped talking and I had no news from her for a few minutes. Panicked, I decided to call her, but I fell directly on her voicemail. I was nervous and started to worry. I looked around, repeating Andrea's name and number so many times, and that's where I saw him. A tall man who was about six feet tall and extremely thin. He had skin on his bones, very hollow cheeks, and huge dark circles, as if he hadn't slept in days. He kept whispering words over and over that we could hardly hear. All I could understand was that he was speaking in another language. It sounded like gibberish. He had a blood-stained axe in his hand. Terrorized, I prayed it wasn't Andrea's. Unfortunately, I couldn't wait for it because the man started chasing at me at maddening speed. I ran with all of my strength until I finally reached the road. Fortunately, cars circulated, they were moving, and the man had returned to the woods. My fear was at its peak, but I kept running along the road to get away from there. As I was running, it was a miracle. I saw in front of me a hundred yards, the silhouette of a young girl my age. And that silhouette actually belonged to Andrea. I ran to her in tears and we returned to our grandparents with fear in our guts. Like me, she had managed to escape by taking another passage. It's been four years since this event happened and I still wonder what would have happened to us if this man had caught up to us.